Okay, the valves are adjusted now. And oh, I might mention when I adjusted the valves, I turned the adjusting screw all the way down, then backed it off about a quarter of a turn. And that was real close. So you can use that for a starting point when you make your adjustment. Um, put the uh, cover on the back of the engine and the uh, these caps, I put those on, put new O rings on. There's O rings in the gasket kit. And now we're ready to do the ignition. And the first thing that we're going to put on is this points cover. And it'll be secured by three screws here. Oh, this has to come off. I put this nut and washer on when um, I disassembled the engine so I could keep track of it. Alright, the next part to go on is this little pin, a little 2 by 5 millimeter pin. And it goes in that hole on the top of your camshaft. If you still have your engine set at top dead center, this hole should be facing straight up. And this is something I'm going to be really careful not to lose because it could be hard to find. I put a rag over the magneto because I didn't want anything going in there. And it's magnetic, it would, this thing could get stuck to something in there. Okay, next we're going to install the centrifugal advance. And it'll slide over this into the camshaft and there's a little slot in here and it'll go over that pin that we just stuck on. That's what, what holds onto it and spins it around. And you might take a look at it while you ha have it here. Make sure the springs are still in good shape and um, that they retract all the way. Um, this part here is the, um, the cam that opens and closes your points. So when it's spinning, um, the uh, centrifugal force will throw these weights out and then th and this part here will turn to the left just a little bit and that's what advances the spark. And at the higher speeds the spark needs to be advanced to make the uh, ATC run right. Okay, looks okay. We'll just slide it on here. Okay, we can put the uh, bolt and washer back on the end of the camshaft. And that's what holds the centrifugal advance on. Okay, we're ready to put the, uh, the points on now. And the points are on this base here. Before you do it, you might want to take a look at them and make sure that the contacts are nice and clean and shiny. Um, if it looks like they might be pitted or worn, it might be a good time to uh, change the points. It would be pretty easy, easy to do right now. Okay, um, I'll put a little bit of oil on this cam. Not a whole lot, but just, we don't want to foul the, the points, but just a little bit. Okay, now we can put it on. Um, slide it underneath the uh, the lock washers. If you took the screws off, you can put them back on now. It wasn't really necessary to take them off to remove the uh, the points. Okay, we'll just tighten up just a little bit because it's not an adjustment yet. And these are the screw the screws that you use to adjust the uh, the, the time in advance. Put this little clip on now. This, let's see which way it goes. Okay.
Okay, you feed the wire through the, uh, the bottom of the cylinder. There's a slot where it will fit right through. And then you plug it into the, uh, the wiring harness underneath the, uh, the frame. It plugs in right here. Now we're ready to set the point gap and the ignition timing. And you'll do it in that order. You'll set the point gap first and then the ignition timing. And uh, if, if you don't remember, you can think about it for a second and figure it out. Um, if you set the ignition timing first, that's done by rotating this plate to the left or the right. Um, and you get that set right. And then if you want to change the uh, point gap, for example, if you want to open the point gap, um, a little wider than it was, when the cam rotates around, it'll start opening a little bit sooner so that it can be open to that newer, wider gap. And if it opens sooner, that would advance the timing and throw your, your, your timing advance off here. On the other hand, if you set the point gap first, and um, the point gap is just set by um, making an adjustment where the points attached to the to this point base plate, and um, it's uh, open and closed by the cam. So turning the plate around will not change the adjustment of the point gap any. Okay, enough about that. You set the gap first, and then the ignition points. And to do this, you want the um, piston at top dead center and you want it to be on com compression stroke and if, if you, you haven't uh, changed the uh, rotated the engine at all since uh, you set the valves you'll still be sitting at the compression stroke but if you have or if you're not sure um, one way to tell is to take a look at your cam I'm talking about the points cam not the uh, valve cam this little cam here and you'll see it's it's all it's you know out around. Right now the top part is a little bit thicker. That's the part where that will open the uh, points. And you want it to be up or maybe a little bit to the left, like at 11 o'clock. If it's down, you're 180 degrees off. Remember the piston turns around, or the crankshaft turns around twice for every time the camshaft turns around. So um, if you see this this thicker part is at the bottom. And turn the engine around one time from the uh, from the crank, and you'll be approximately in the right position to start setting your points. Set the points. You lo loosen this screw and this screw under here. I'm not too loose. You want them to have a little bit of friction in there because if you get them too loose, you try to set the points, they'll just snap back. So you will you will adjust the point by putting the feeler gauge in here. First, you want to get it. Turn the engine to where this cam and this point here are in contact at the highest point, so the points are open the widest, and then you will set the gap. You can see the points opening and closing, so you, you open them to where they're at their widest point, and you get a feeler gauge in here. They're going to be set at 12 to 16 thousandths of an inch or three-tenths to four-tenths of a millimeter. Okay, this is slightly too wide. The 16, 16 thousandths of an inch slides in here without even touching. So I'm, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I want to loosen this one here just a bit and then I'll loosen this one and I'll move this down just a bit small 
but you can play with it a little bit and when you get it between 12 to 16 thousandths or 3 to 4 tenths of a millimeter then you will tighten up these two screws again and the point gap will be set. Yeah, there's a place here there's a little, little bump on the backing plate and you can put the screwdriver in there and twist it to help you uh, move the points a little bit more control than just tapping on like I was doing before. Okay, the gap is set now. Um, it's a little tedious, but once you get it, um, you tighten down these two screws. There's one here and one under here. And then you need to reset it again just to make sure that tightening the screws down didn't uh, you know, throw the setting off. Okay, the next thing we're going to set is the spark advance. So you, you find the F and T mark. Uh, you should be in approximately the right position right now, but you find the F and T mark down on the down here on the cam rotor and you'll, you'll find that that the F mark is a little bit to the left of the T because the spark plug actually fires just before top dead center okay so to, to set the timing right what you want to do is um, the engine turns from this angle counterclockwise so you want to move, move the um, the rotor around and when the um, F mark just passes this mark here on the stator um, the point should just begin to open and if they're just beginning to open you've got to set right if not um, you loosen the, the two screws holding the space plate and rotate a little bit until you get it to where it just opens and at that point um, your timing will be set. Then you can put the cover on and you can put the, the, uh, the starter cage and the starter on back on again.